Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today we're having some Halloween fun. We're making tombstones out of the foam on the CNC machine and along the way I'm going to show you some painting techniques that I haven't seen before. Let's get started. The bit that I'm going to be using to cut this foam is the sixteenth of an inch upcut bit. That will help get the chips from the foam up and out away from the foam itself. I'm also going to start out at 100 inches per minute for a feed rate. Plunge rate of 9 inches per minute. Quite a few people have asked how I increase or decrease the speed while the machine's running. Well, right up here at the top of the screen, there is a feed rate with a plus and a minus so that you can increase or decrease that speed. This is set at 100 inches per minute to begin with, and folks, this is a very, very handy feature to have. This is an example to show you, this is running at full speed at the 100 inches per minute. I wanted to get a close-up of the bit because running at this speed, 100 inches per minute, and using the lowest setting on the DeWalt 611 router, which is the number one, I did not have any burning of the bit and no buildup. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. You want to be able to move fast and you want to use an upcut bit so it gets the chips up and out of the way. Okay, with everything cut out now, I'm just going to take it over to the bandsaw and cut the profile out. I do this because it's a lot quicker and I just have the outline drawn from the uh, CNC machine. Now cutting the outside of this, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is where the fun part begins. We're going to take a keyhole saw and we're going to start roughing these edges up. And this is where we start the weathering process. So, and you can do as much or as little of this as you want. You can also use different tools and be able to kind of rough it up, smooth off the edges where the keyhole saw does its part. You can also cut out little chunks like this to make it look kind of weathered. And we'll put another one over here too. And we'll actually break off the chunk here and then we can take this just a brass brush and kind of smooth it off a little bit so it makes it look a little bit more like it's weathered there we go now then whoops 
Let's cut this down in here a little bit where this is kind of broken. And we can do the same thing in this area. And we'll just take out a little bit of a chunk. Now if that's a little bit too much, we can actually just kind of take off a little bit more. Okay, and what this is, this is just a little styrofoam cutter that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And I wanted to try that this year. And basically you can just cut your lines really any way that you want. And you're trying to get that weathered look out of it. It's like over time the water has just made the indentions in it. Let's bring this over and emphasize this a little bit more. And again, this is where you can do anything that you want. Let's bring some into here where that's kind of chipped out. We'll bring that down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing in here. A little bit coming down in this way. And we'll do a little bit over in this area too. We'll cut out that little bit of a chunk. Just break that off. And there we go. Emphasize this a little bit more. Break that out. Okay. And that'll drip that way. A little bit of water dripping off that way. Okay, so it doesn't take much. And again, you can do as much or as little as you want. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is take a heat gun, and we're going to help to make so, another weathering type of effect into the foam. This heats up real quick, and it starts to melt it, and makes it indent a little bit, and that's what I want. This, again, helps to show the wear of the stone over the time and that's what we're looking for we want it to look old and see how those sharp edges we can get rid of the sharp edges there and just make them go away we don't really want the sharp edges again this doesn't take much to give the desired effect I'm going to kind of round off this a little bit, get rid of that edge some. There we go. So this is what it looks like so far. Now with the color, it'll start to really bring out some nice effects. And what I'm using is just some acrylic paint that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And you can get this at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, Walmart doesn't really matter and on this part what we want to do is just be able to cover into these crevices and again this is not something that has to be really accurate we just want it to be able to cover in those areas so this is actually going to go pretty quick now when I chose the 16th of an inch bit, I actually was using a different font down here for the RS um, Rest in Peace. And I changed the font to a, something different where literally I could have switched bits and gone with an eighth inch bit. And that would have taken my carve time from being 10 minutes with that 16th inch bit to something probably quite a bit less but I figured 10 minutes still wasn't bad so I didn't change it and I just let it go now 
you'll also want to note that when you buy this foam new, it has a little thin plastic layer over it. You'll need to remove that. Now the foam that I have here was this old scrap piece and that had already been removed. So I apologize for not explaining that earlier in the video. Now then, where we melted this part of the plastic with the heat gun, we're gonna just kinda brush that into a light area because most of the paint is going to take that out when we roll it in. A little bit should be left. And I think you can see why this would be a good kids project because there's nothing that really has to be exact about this. And there's no right or wrong way to really do it. So the kids can have a lot of fun doing this. All right. Not much to look at yet, but it'll come together real quick now. The types of paint that I use are just little sample uh, containers that you get for three or four bucks. Oftentimes, we'll even get the reduced ones where somebody decided they didn't want it, so it's even less expensive. This one was 50 cents, and they come from either Lowe's or um, Home Depot. It's a real inexpensive way to get the paints to be able to do this. Now I just picked out a light gray color that we're going to use. If you remember, I just put this black acrylic on, so it is still wet. But what I'm going to do, very lightly, put this on now. And it'll start making everything pop and look really good. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is finish, flip this over and paint the back side. But I think you can see in really just a couple of minutes here to be able to get this painted looks pretty good this is a good base coat okay the last technique that i want to show you is where i spray some water or some windex it doesn't really matter because both will dry pretty well and you want big bubbles and then you take some black paint and just very lightly mist it and what you're doing is actually painting the bubbles itself and allowing those bubbles to drip down. And it makes it look like it's aged with the water running over time. So just a little bit goes a long ways. We'll let that drip and you can already see where it's dripping down with that color in it. And that's what we wanna be able to accomplish. I'm going to add a little bit more water, or in this case, I've got Windex. There we go. And I can tap it just a little bit. And that's the effect that I'm looking for. You can see the black. In there, you can see a little bit of the water, how it drips down. That's what I'm looking for. So, I think that looks awesome. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.